Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri and I'm the developer of Infranodus, an AI-based text network analysis tool that can visualize any text as a network, reveal the main concepts inside, show how they're connected, help you discover high-level ideas and also the gaps between them so you can use those gaps to generate new ideas. In this video I want to present a really interesting workflow that can be used for marketing research or competitive intelligence and using this workflow you will be able to understand uh, any market very well and also use the discourse of your competitors to understand their weak sides, their strong sides as well as uh, the existing gaps on top of which you can generate some interesting ideas for your own products and services. I'm going to demonstrate how it works using a real-life example. We have a longer video on the channel that explains this work workflow in more detail. Uh, the sound there is not always really good, but you can use it to dig a little bit deeper on every step of the process. Here I'm just going to make a general overview. So first of all, you need to open Infranodos apps and go to the marketing tab in those apps because uh, you can already see really easily uh, what this workflow will consist of. Here we have first step, contextual supply. So this enables us to see what search results exist on any topic. You can also use it for search engine optimization. We also have contextual demand, which will show us uh, what people are searching for when they search for a certain query. We have demand minus supply, which shows us the difference. So what people are searching for, but don't yet find. We can analyze the websites and URLs of the competitors' websites and finally perform a customer review or survey analysis to understand what the people are actually saying about those products in the market. So first of all, we will start with contextual supply. We want to understand the market in general to get like a quick overview of what's happening. And we'll use a real example of AI writing tools because this is the topic I'm interested in at the moment. Um, add this into the graph and then we visualize Google search results as a network where the main concepts are shown bigger and if they appear in the same context uh, they will have the same color and will be closer to each other on the graph. So this enables us to get a sort of a map of uh, what exists out there on this topic. And by the way AI writing tools are removed from the graph because we want to see the context around them. If we get them back you see that they kind of take too much attention so instead select them, hide them from the graph, this happens automatically, and then you see what is the context around this query. And what's great is that usually on Google you would be uh, susceptible to the algorithms or to your own cognitive bias. Here you get rid of all of that, you just get a nice overview of uh, the main ideas for the top 40 search results. You can also choose more or less. We see that a lot of the, those results are on writing content, um, copywriting, generator, Assistant. We also have a whole cluster on ChatGPT here. In fact, at the top, you can actually click in the analytics panel on all these ideas and see, uh, you know, what they are. And if you want to dig in a little bit deeper, so for example, here I see Jasper. It's a product. I can click and see in which context it's used, uh, and then click on the search results uh, where I can jump into this topic better. So you can also use the graph not only to get an overview but to also get to the specifics and explore uh, some interesting aspects of the discourse. You can also generate high-level ideas here using GPT-3 AI which takes these topics identified using network analysis and gives them some easy to understand names uh, that summarize them for you. So we see that there is uh, some on copywriting, grammar checking, content creation, and so on. So basically these tools are mainly focused, uh, AI writing tools are mainly focused on copywriting and content creation. Uh, not so much uh, on research, uh, for example, or on fictional writing and so on. Right? If we click here we see the rest. So they're really more to help uh, write mostly uh, blog articles and copywriting. You can also use this nice feature here, Gap Inside, so it detects a structural gap in the network and then shows you uh, how those two topics could be better connected. So for example here, it's one on natural language and another one is on plagiarism detection. And then you can use GPT-3 AI to generate an idea that would link those two topics together. You can also think of this idea yourself, but if you want it to be faster, then you can generate some ideas that would link uh, the clusters of topics that exist at the moment 
in this discourse in a new and interesting way. I like to use the question feature because then it asks me a question, answering which I can develop an idea. But you can also ask it to develop an idea or an assertion or to challenge it. Okay, then we go on. The next step is to go back to the apps and to use uh, the other one, which is contextual demand app. So here we look for uh, what people are searching for when they search for AI writing tools. And it works in a way that's very similar to what you see when you search on Google for something. It tells you that people who search this also search that. So that's basically the information it gets. And it's very nice because you get the idea of the informational uh, demand here. So what people are searching for. And we see that they're not using the word tool, in fact, so much. It's quite small. Mostly they're, they're talking about generators. So that would be an interesting insight for us, let's say, for our uh, search optimization strategy or if we want to market our tool, maybe we would still try to use the word generator even if it seems counterintuitive just because people are using it when they search for AI writing tools. And they also want free, of course. So this is also like a part of the marketing strategy that we can use. Okay, you can actually click on each word and see in which context they use. So, for example, free generator. Okay, this is uh, all the search queries that people use with those topics. You can also get those ideas back in, like the main search terms. So you get like a more uh, of an overview of what they're doing. The next step that is really interesting is to compare informational demand to informational supply. And in order to do this, you go back to the Google graph that we created. So you open the uh, informational supply and then you click on this button on the left that allows you to compare to graphs and you ask it to show the difference to the keywords uh, to what people are searching for and this is really great because it shows you it describes it here what exists in the graph of the keywords that people use but not in the search result and what you will see is that there's only this one relationship and it's quite interesting it's actually story generator so we see that people are searching for AI story generator, but it's not like they find it a lot. And this is a really good insight for us because we can use this information to maybe focus a little bit more on this aspect because it's not so much present. Um, and we can, of course, ask ourselves if it's a profitable uh, audience or not, you know, story writers. But this is another question here. We're just revealing some gaps in the current discourse and the difference between uh, the informational demand and the informational supply. So we know that we can focus on stories. If you want, you can make a note here and save this idea. So for example, AI story generator. Save this idea and you will keep it for later use in one of those graphs. Okay, so the next step is to then study uh, the websites of the companies that exist in the market. And this uh, you can do, I actually used Google results for this to get uh, an understanding of what those top companies are. I saw Writer, Writesonic and so on. So I basically imported, uh, I used the URL import app and imported these uh, four websites contents into one graph. Okay. Uh, in the other video that is longer, you can see how it's done. But it's basically, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just copy and paste the links and use the URL import app in for notes. We see that when they talk about themselves, obviously they use the word AI a lot. And this is the name of the product, Copy AI, so we can hide it from the graph to get to the parts that seem more interesting. And then maybe also content, let's get rid of that. Uh, brand names, because we're not interested in the brand names, we're interested in what they're talking about when they present their products to understand the discourse better. And we see that they're talking a lot about writing blogs. So they're all focused on writing blogs and sometimes also marketing copies, ads, Google. We can actually click and see in which context they use this. So they either propose us to write better blog articles or marketing copies. Uh, not so much more, not from what I can see from this graph. So this is an interesting insight for us. We can also reveal high-level ideas just to verify our hypothesis. This is an interesting insight for us because we know if we want to develop this product, the market is already quite crowded. And we see that they offer chatbot solutions. Uh, they offer stuff like writing blog posts, uh, 
add copies, but what is missing? Stories? And also, I didn't see anything about scientific research. So that could be an interesting niche for us to explore. And this is what we identify using this analysis, because we can also see here if there's anything on research. No, actually, they're not talking about research or science, also nothing. So that's interesting because it, it shows to us what is the current gap in the market. And the next step that we can do after we studied the discourse of those companies, uh, the informational supply, information demand, we can also start ideating on top of this discourse. So for example, this is what the companies are saying about themselves. We can go to Gap Insights and ask Infernodus to generate some gaps, and to highlight them in the network and to show us how we could connect them in interesting ways. So for example, here it proposes us to connect the cluster on creative generation with writing tools. And if we click here, it's going to generate an insight question that will attempt to link those two groups of concepts together. And what's great about this feature is that uh, it actually analyzes the structure of what the text is about and then it feeds this processed information into GPT-3 AI. So you're not feeding all the websites, but rather you're asking it to identify what are the relevant parts of the discourse that are not yet connected, and then it feeds those relevant parts and asks GPT-3 to connect them in an interesting way. So this is a much more efficient approach, and you can use it to better ideate on top of the existing content. One other thing that you can do is to also study customer reviews for each of those companies. I have here, for instance, customer reviews for Copy AI, and it shows me what people are talking about when they talk about this product. And it's quite interesting. I already removed some of the unnecessary words. We see that in general it's quite positive, but still they're talking about writing blog posts. So again, we know that they all focus on blog posts. If we are to enter this market of AI writing tools, we will definitely not focus on blog posts. Or if we do, we have to offer something exceptionally different. So we will rather try to take a different angle. And this is what we can also get from this analysis. This is what they're all focusing on. But there are also a lot of stuff that are missing, like research workflows uh, and other stuff, which I will show you how you can actually explore later. So here I'm seeing uh, what people are saying about the product. And a nice feature here is to go into the sentiment tab and to use the advanced AI model to generate uh, analysis of the negative reviews. And then you click on the negative ones to only filter the negative stuff to see what people are saying in relation to this product when they talk bad about it. And what we can see here is that uh, they talk about idea generation. They don't like something in how it generates ideas. We can click on this cluster to expand it and see some words which they use and then see in which context it, it was actually used. For example, here they're talking about lack of human touch and lacks creativity and unique angles. Okay, so we can write this down here that Copy AI lacks creativity and unique angles. And this is one of the criticism. And this is interesting for us because on the one side we can improve this aspect, but also on the other side, now we know what are the weak sides of our competition. And uh, this is a really nice and useful information that will only make it better for the customers in the end. Great. Uh, one last thing I want to show is how to ideate on top of the existing discourse. So, for example, here we have uh, the websites of those companies for top players in the market. We can even combine this. We can add in, uh, a combination with the Google search results. Uh, I think they are here, yeah. So we combine now how the companies are talking about themselves with the Google search results uh, for AI productivity tools to get like as much general view of the discourse as possible. So the marketing talk plus all the top Google stuff. And then what it allows us to have is a network representation of the main ideas and then we can use this structure to ideate using this AI module here. And this is great because if you want to generate some innovative ideas in relation to this discourse, 
you wouldn't be able to feed all this data into something like ChatGPT or uh, Write Sonic and ask it to come up with something creative because it would be very generic what it comes up with. The advantage here is that Infranodus already identified the main topical clusters for you. It studied the structure, it's, it saw what are the gaps, and then it's going to try to generate new ideas based on those gaps which were identified. And here, one of those gaps is, for instance, uh, you can actually highlight it in the network, uh, is to think about the connection between copywriting tools and customer experience. Okay. And then if you click on inside question, it's going to generate, it's going to use GPT-3 AI to generate an interesting research question that can help you uh, link those two ideas together. So for example, uh, some platform that could be used to improve the way that customers support uh, rights to the client. So not chatbots, but to rather uh, help help people respond to queries or maybe even create knowledge bases. So this can be a great idea. We can save it to the notes um, just to keep it for later use. Uh, if you don't want to answer those questions and you want something a bit more automatic, you can also use ID8 button or assert develop. This will already generate an idea for you. So you will not use GPT-3 AI to generate a research question, but just to generate uh, a ready-made idea, uh, almost like a business idea. So this is if you have less time, and it's also quite interesting what it comes up with. Sometimes it's really great business ideas. Here it's about copywriting software platform that helps customers to market their product and support them in choosing the right tool. So maybe something about choosing the right tool based on their needs, some kind of chatbot. That can be interesting, and so on. So you see, you can regenerate some ideas, and if you don't like what you see, just click Next Advice. It's going to find another gap, and then generate some more ideas based on that other gap. And as I said, we're using a structured representation of this discourse, how the companies are talking about themselves, Google search results, and then uh, we ideate on top of those, this discourse within a very structured way by detecting the structural gap in between the different topics and then asking uh, the AI to generate some interesting ideas that would bridge those gaps. So this is how it works. I hope you find it interesting. You can try it on infranodus.com. Choose a topic that you're interested in to try it out. Uh, you can always build on top of the existing graphs by importing more and more data, but I recommend to start with something small uh, that is somehow manageable to run the first iteration of the analysis and to then move on. You always have the workflow helper here on the right that shows you the steps that you can perform to analyze any text. So this is a really, really useful feature. I recommend you to use it because uh, and then you will make sure you didn't forget any aspect of text exploration. It's just at the top right here where you can find it. And also try out the different import apps uh, inside of Notice. Like I said, when you click on market research here, you see the different options. So, you know, you can find something really interesting for yourself there. Try it on infernodes.com. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments of this video. Also subscribe to our channel to be informed when we publish uh, more tutorials on different topics. And you can contact us via our support portal if you have any questions or have any feedback. Thank you very much and have a great day.